Hey, so uh, I did a first impressions video when I got my Aerial Rider Grizzly 1300 miles ago, and so I thought I'd uh, film a little update in case that's interesting for anybody. Um, so basically, you know, it has met most of my expectations, um, and I'm really happy with it. I got a couple notes, but basically, this has been an awesome bike. Um, it's built like a little tank, it's super solid construction. You know, I there's and it's just a really solid little vehicle. Um, as you may know, you got your two hub motors, you got two batteries, it's got um, really great power and, uh, and substantial range. Um, and so those have been awesome. I actually did an unintentional range test last week where I did uh, 12 miles out and then 12 miles back for my commute, forgot to charge it overnight and just had to risk it and did another 12 plus miles. So I did about 37 miles um, on one charge and it just barely made it. The red, you know, it was, I could feel it had lost power um, and uh, you know, the red light indicator was on and stuff like that, but that was all throttle. And so that 37 or so miles is pretty consistent with some other, um, reviewers uh, posts so uh, you know if you're all throttle and you're just popping along that seems like a you know that's what I would expect um, one issue there, there's sort of two major things that I'd like to change about this bike one is that if you're under about eight miles an hour seven eight miles an hour and you have both the hub motors engaged the front wheel will spin out and even if you're a heavier rider a gentleman wrote in uh, to my first video and said that he weighs 220 pounds and it spins out for him at low speed and that means that the, that the rubber wears out much more quickly if you're letting that happen i really tried to avoid it but yet my front tire wore out um, more than my rear and uh, so i've i recently uh very recently changed both tires and which was actually very tough for the front wheel but less so for the rear for whatever reason um it's really hard to get the tire both off and then the new one on for the front tire i'm not sure why it was different between the two but um anyways um so my solution to the you know the way i try to minimize the wear this is the uh switch where you toggle you can sit you can go uh, rear motor only front motor only and then if you're in between it's both motors so normally i'm cruising along at a good rate of speed with both motors when i have to stop i'll i'll toggle it down to just the rear once i'm up to speed after just a couple seconds i'll go to the middle section or middle setting to do bo both motors um normally not a big deal except when i'm wearing winter gloves it's pretty um you know it's a little trickier to make that toggle but you know not not that big of a deal the bigger deal is actually the headlight situation this headlight is just not bright enough to actually see in the dark it works as a good daytime running light um, i added this um, bike light that's quite bright and so um, not ideal um, same is true for the tail light great that they integrated a light into the battery here not bright enough so I, I, if I could change anything about the bike, it would be the lights, um, making them significantly brighter. But you know, uh, I'm, I'm working around that. Um, as I talked about in my first video, um, I have a stem that's longer and lower. I have handlebars that are much, much lower. Uh, just for me personally, that works a lot better to have a, a lower stance on the bike. It's more aerodynamic, it's more um, sort of athletic. It's more, I'm used to, to uh, road and mountain riding um, or road and mountain bikes. And so it's more just similar to that, but you know, it might not be your thing. Um, I also added that mirror. I pretty much just would not, I'd be not very comfortable on any bike without a mirror. So um, all those, you know, things are easily available uh, online. Um, there, you can buy a, a, a well, you, it's possible to get a longer saddle, uh, which especially for taller riders is going to be a good good buy, I think, good add. 
Um, they're planning to come out with a rack here or a basket system that you can bolt on. I think probably because of the same supply chain, you know, woes that, that most manufacturers are experiencing. That's not available as of this filming. My solution was to design, um, actually in Tinkercad, um, this and then laser cut the, a couple sheets of plywood and bolt them on their bolt points down there. Um, and then the bag comes off and then again, that's a Tinkercad designed 3D printed anchor point there, just bolts on. So you could use all kinds of programs to design stuff like that. Um, and that was my solution that has worked really well. It's not the most weatherproof, you know, ply plywood is not the most weatherproof solution, but I'm not writing this in the rain anyway. And then the bag just, um, you know, hooks in up top there. Um, these pannier bags hold, uh, occasionally I do grocery shopping. They'll do like two full bags of groceries, which is great. Um, but mostly I'm using it for, you know, work stuff. Um, maybe it's cold in the morning and I put my, my layers in back in the bags for an afternoon uh, ride home when it's warmer, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, overall, um, I'm very happy with this bike. If I didn't have it, we would have to buy another car for the family. Um, I rely on it that much. I also like using a lot less um, fossil fuels, not having to pay for them, not having to impact the environment and not having to, you know, especially foreign, you know, sources of fuel, right? I, I, I'm very happy to not be uh, supporting other, other countries. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so it's, it's just been a great, basically overall, it's great. There's a few tweaks I'd make if I could, but I'm super happy with this uh, Aero Rider Grizzly. And, um, you know, I hope maybe there's, uh, this, this review is helpful or interesting um, to folks. All right, thank you.